Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will uh, talk about uh, uh, the internal direct product, so which is a very important construction uh, in group theory. So, let us uh, begin with recalling uh, what is uh, this uh, direct product of groups or external direct product of groups. Okay. So, here recall. So, let us stick with only uh, two, uh, two groups, so there is no issue. So, let us start with G 1 and G 2. So, these are given groups. Okay. So, now we have seen already we can take the Cartesian product of these two groups okay. as a set it is the tuples bracket x y where x is coming from G 1 and y is coming from G 2. And this Cartesian product made into a group by defining the group law as follows. So, you take two tuples x y and then you define the product x dash y dash the product to be x x dash comma y y dash. Okay. So, where note that this x x dash so this is product okay. maybe let me let me write it as dot and then here I will use the different color star. So, this product happening in G 1 and then this one is happening in G 2. Okay. So, the new product, so this is a new product defined for any, coup, any two given tuples x y and x dash y dash and that is defined to be first you take the product of x x dash inside G 1 and then take a product of y y dash inside G 2. And one can verify that G 1 cross G 2 is indeed a group with respect to this new product. Okay. And identity element will be identity element of this G 1 cross G 2 is exactly equal to identity element of G 1 comma identity element of G 2. And if you take any x y and then the inverse will be just x inverse inside G 1 and y inverse inside G 2. Okay. So, these things I guess I already asked you to verify. So, you can double check. And associative law comes for free from the associative law of laws of G 1 and G 2. Okay. So, this is called external direct product. Okay. This is called external direct product. So, why we call it external direct product because so you have we have started with given groups and then we have produced a new group which is a Cartesian product of uh, G 1 G 2. But what we want to do we want to actually now construct what is called internal direct product of subgroups. Okay. So, so, one can actually always look for uh, some groups of this form. Okay. So, what you can realize suppose if I start with okay, so this G 1 and G 2 if you look at this Cartesian the direct product of these groups okay, this is the direct product. The following observation can be made very easily. For example, if I take G 1 cross E identity G 2, so this is like x axis and y axis. So, x axis is G 1 and y axis is G 2. Okay, so, that is the thing. So, this is G 1 and this is G 2. So, I am looking at only the this part that is G 1 cross identity G 2. So, that is indeed normal subgroup of G 1 cross G 2. Okay. So, these are all easy verifications. I will just leave it you to leave it to you to verify. Okay. And then if you take similarly this identity G 2, identity G 1 sorry cross G 2. So, that is again normal subgroup inside G 1 cross G 2. So, there are two normal subgroups one is this G 1 another one is this uh, G 2. Okay. So, from that you are actually producing this Cartesian product. Okay. So, both of them are normal subgroups inside your G 1 cross G 2. So, now if you think about it given 
any element of this g1 cross g2 so given any element there exists unique element let us call it x identity in g1 cross this e g2 and then y sorry identity g1 y inside e g1 cross g2 ok this is something one can identify with g1. So, it is naturally isomorphic to g1 this is naturally isomorphic to g2 ok. So, basically two groups are there those two groups are forming this g1 cross g2 and you can see that given g which is denoted by the tuple x y let us say. So, then you can see that there exists unique elements x in g1 and y in g2 such that the product of these two element is exactly the given element g. So, it has some kind of unique decomposition of elements of g1 and elements g2 ok. So, this given g can be written as product of these two elements coming from g1 and g2 in a unique way. So, this is something very very important property of this direct product ok. So, in particularly so this is something we want to mimic for the general group ok. So, we have this uh, uh, group g1 cross g2 which is a nice group created from given two groups g1 and g2, but uh, what are all the properties that given group is actually uh, sorry uh, this uh, g1 cross g2 has. So, g1 cross g2 is obtained from g1 and g2, but if you think about it these properties are important properties ok. g1 is being uh, normal in g1 cross g2 and g2 being normal and any given element is just uh, uh, product of elements from g1 and g2 and written in unique way. So, these are all the important properties of uh, this g1 cross g2. So, later if I get time I will actually discuss a bit about what is called semi direct product. So, where uh, this property is actually somewhat will be violated ok. But anyway, so let us let us focus on direct product now. So, direct products is some particular way of getting uh, groups from existing groups ok. And if we think about it g1 cross g2 is is formed from g1 and g2 and g1 g2 one can identify it as them as subgroups of g1 cross g2 satisfying these three properties. So, this is something we want to take it and then and then extend abstractly for any given group g. So, what is the meaning of that? So, let us let us think about it and then see. See whenever we have this external direct product we are starting with already two groups ok. But if you want to do this for some given group ok. So, that means what you have to identify suitable subgroups first ok. So, that is what it is the direct product is somewhat happening internally that is why we are calling it as internal direct product. So, let me just first define it and then it will become clear. So, what is internal direct product? You take h and k both are subgroups of g. I want to say that g is created from h and k ok. So, in some sense I want g to be isomorphic of h cross k. So, h cross k is another group that is coming from h and k treating them as just a groups ok. So, this is well defined, but g is something is like ambient group that has h and k as subgroups. So, for some reasons I want to say g is just isomorphic to h cross k it is not something new, but how do one duplicate this in terms of only being inside group g. So, you can see that so the statement that we have written before all of them can be rewritten here there is no issue 
one can say that h and k they are normal subgroups of g and then if i take any element of this uh, capital g that should be written in a unique way product of some element coming from capital h and some element from capital k and that can be actually characterized as follows so it is just product of hk is exactly g and h intersection k is just identity if these properties satisfied then you can call g is internal direct product of h and k so these two properties should be satisfied so this is property 1 and this is property 2 so these two properties should be satisfied. so let me make a theorem okay so then it becomes clear what we indeed talking about okay so the following are equivalent so let us fix some notation before that so let's take let's take g b a group and h and k they are subgroups of g okay so then i want to claim the following okay so so g is equal to hk and h intersection k is identity and both h and k are normal in g so this is these three properties is equivalent to g being okay so let me put it this way h and k are normal in g and each element of okay let me call it g in g for each element there exists unique tuple h in h and k in k such that g equal to hk this is another thing and the third thing is g is indeed isomorphic to h cross k so these three properties are equal okay g is just isomorphic to h cross k and h and k are both normal subgroups of g such that the product hk is equal to g and h intersection k is identity and hk both are normal and for each element g in g there exists unique h and k in capital k such that g equal to hk so if these properties satisfied then g must be isomorphic to h cross k so that is why we want to call the subgroups they are satisfying these properties as internal uh, if you can find two subgroups satisfying these properties then you want to call g is just internal direct product of those two subgroups h and k okay so uh, let's prove this equivalence okay so before that so let me just uh, try to recall uh, some something about uh, this h k okay this is aside maybe i will write it as a lemma okay or proposition so this proportion is about the subset hk so you start with h and k which is a subgroup of g so then we can form this subset hk so this is just the product of all possible element hk where h is coming from capital h and k is coming from capital k so a priori this hk is just a subset of g it may not be subgroup okay we want to understand when it is a subgroup okay so you start with this so then so this is a subgroup if and only if hk should be same as kh so this is somewhat very important observation so what is the proof so proof is is somewhat trivial okay because so recall okay we have for any subgroups if h is subgroup of g then h inverse one can define h inverse is those inverse of all elements of uh, capital h h inverse h in capital h 
So, for a subgroup it is easy to see h inverse is same as h. So, this is something trivial to check. So, now one way for example, if you assume that h k is a subgroup okay, assume h k is a subgroup of G. So, then what we have then h k inverse it is not hard to check. So, this is going to be h k inverse where h comes from h k comes from capital K. So, then this is going to be equal to exactly k inverse h inverse where k is coming from capital K and h is coming from capital H. So, then if you think about it this is exactly equal to h k inverse equal to k inverse h inverse. Okay. But since both of them being subgroups you can see that k inverse equal to k and h inverse equal to h. Now, if h k is a subgroup then h k inverse should be h k. So, that means h k should be equal to k h. So, one way is obvious. What is about the converse? So, conversely assume h k is same as k h. So, then we want to verify h k must be a subgroup. So, to verify that start with two elements inside h k. So, then what one can do you can write x equal to some small h k and then y equal to some h dash k dash where h is coming from h h dash coming from capital H and k k dash again coming from capital K. Okay. So, now if you compute x y inverse then what will happen it is just h k h dash k dash inverse which is going to be h k k dash sorry k dash inverse times h dash. Okay. So, what it is it is exactly equal to h k k dash inverse h dash, but you know that to, to see this. So, this is element of capital K. So, this is element of capital K. So, this is element of capital H. So, this part will lie in k times h, but k times h is h times k that is what given. So, then if you use this, this element okay, whatever this k, k dash inverse h dash can be replaced as h double dash k double dash okay, for some h double dash in capital H and k double dash in capital K. So, now if you replace this with this you can see that x y inverse is exactly equal to h h double dash and then k double dash. So, this is in capital H this is in capital K. So, that means, so this is in h k. So, this is what we wanted to verify. Okay. So, if I take x y in h k then x y inverse is also in h k. So, this is the claim that we wanted to verify and that is verified now. Okay. So, that means h k is a subgroup, h k is a subgroup of g. So, this proves that h k is a subgroup if and only if this h k should be equal to k h. So, this is a natural characterization which is very powerful characterization later we will see in many places uh, this can be verified and then using this we immediately conclude h k is a subgroup. Okay. So, now let us get back to our theorem. So, this is the theorem that uh, we wanted to prove. Okay. So, let us assume uh, the, the property one. Okay. So, let us call it this is A, this is B and then this is C. So, we want to prove uh, all three are equivalent. So, logically so you have to prove A implies B, B implies C and then C implies C. Okay. So, if you complete this cycle then you can say that all these three statements are equivalent. For example, if you want to go from B to C, you can go via B to C and then C to A. 
ok. So, that way you get B to A. So, let us prove this. Uh, so, let us recall how one can prove like A, A in plus B. So, what is A? A is H and K are normal subgroups of G and G is equal to H K and H intersection K is identity. So, this is what A. What we need to prove? Need to prove B. So, this is what we need to prove. So, which is H and K are normal in G and given G in capital G there exists unique H in capital H, K in capital K such that G equal to H K. So, it is clear that H and K are normal because that is already given to us. So, we have to prove that any given element G can be written as product of H and K in some unique way. So, since G equal to H K, so that implies given G can be written as H time K for some H in H and K in K. So, this is clear. So, now we want to say it can be written uniquely. So, let us take there are two ways to write. So, G equal to H K and H dash K dash for H H dash in K in capital H and K K dash in capital K ok for some there are two tuples such that the product being equal. So, then what happens? So, if you look at it then this is exactly equal to H dash inverse H equal to K dash times K inverse ok. But this is inside capital H this is inside capital K. So, that means whatever this element call it x this is going to be inside H intersection K. But what is given? So, given is H intersection K is identity. So, that means this x has to be identity. So, that will force that H equal to H dash and K equal to K dash ok. So, that proves uniqueness of the tuples H K ok. So, that proves A implies B. Now, we want to prove that G is isomorphic to H cross K assuming B. So, we want to assume B and then we want to prove C. C is G is isomorphic to H cross K. What is B? Both H and K are normal in G. G can be written as ok any element of G for all G in G there exists unique H in H k in k such that g equal to h k. Using this property we want to prove g is isomorphic to h k. So, now you can easily see that there is a natural map you can define call it phi from g to h cross k. Because given any element g you can write it in a unique way h k. So, that means take g and write it as h k and send it to h comma k. So, this is a well defined map because the tuple H k is uniquely determined by G ok. So, this is well defined map, well defined map and this is also a surjective map ok. Given any H k you can take the product H k. So, that is going to be element in capital G ok. So, that is map to H comma k. So, this is a surjective map, well defined map and this is surjective map and this is also one to one map because if I take the tuples equal to in the image H k equal to H dash k dash then H must be equal to H dash and k must be equal to k dash ok. So, let me do it H k equal to H dash k dash then that would imply that H equal to H dash and k equal to k dash. So, that would imply that H k equal to H dash k dash. So, that means the pre images are same ok. This is just the phi of whatever. So, that implies phi is 1 to 1. So, it is a bijective well defined map. So, we have to check 
this is indeed group homomorphism. So, only remaining thing is a group homomorphism. So, let us check how it how, why it is group homomorphism. So, it is again comes for free from the definition because if I take G, G dash in capital G, G you write it as HK and G dash you write it as H dash K dash. And for some, okay, this is all uniquely determined H, H dash in H and K, K dash in capital K. So, now you want to take a product here G, G dash and look at the image and then you want to see whether this is same as phi of G, phi of G dash. So, let us see what phi of G. So, phi of G is going to be H comma K phi of g dash is going to be h dash comma k dash. So, phi of g times phi of g dash is going to be h h dash comma k k dash and this products now happening inside h and inside k, but both are subgroups of g. So, indeed they are all happening inside capital G only. Okay. So, now what will be phi g times phi g dash. So, this is the product in the direct product. So, this product is happening inside uh, h cross k. Okay. This is happening in h cross k. So, what it is? If it is exactly equal to h h dash comma k k dash. Okay. So, now we want to just match. Okay. So, this is the image that is what we want to say this is exactly equal to this. So, how do we say this? So, let us look at what is g g dash. So, g g dash will be h k times h dash k dash all these products now happening in capital G. So, now this can be now rewritten as follows this is you can write it as h h dash and then h dash inverse k h dash and then k dash okay product of these two okay so now take this element so, what we want to say, okay. So, if you look at this element, okay, let us let us do some asset calculation. So, if we tell, okay, so for example, if I take uh, if G is isomorphic to H cross K, so then if you take elements of H and elements of K, they must commute, okay. So, this is something easy to see. So, let, let me write it here. If I take some h comma identity and then identity comma k, if I take the product, this is going to be h comma k. So, which is same as k comma identity times identity comma h. So, these products are happening, okay, these products are happening inside h cross k. So, because these products are commuting inside h cross k that suggests that if I take product of capital H and capital K elements they should commute. So, let us try to understand it. Okay. So, let us take h k to say that h k is same as k h inside g it is enough to say h k h inverse k inverse is identity inside G. So, these two are equivalent. So, this is something very easy. But now look at this element H k H inverse K inverse. So, this is something very interesting element this is called uh, the commutator of H comma K. So, which is denoted usually by the bracket H comma K. Okay. But this commutator is very interesting element which actually deducts how far this H and K are being away from 
commutative ok. But in this special case if you look at this element this can be read as follows for example one can group these three elements first and then this element as separate element. If you group it like this then you can see that this h k h inverse this is must be element in capital K as K is normal subgroup of G because K is normal any conjugate of elements of capital K must be element of capital K. So, this must be in K and K inverse is already in element of capital K. So, that means K H K inverse times this K inverse must be in capital K. Okay, this is the commutator. But again one can read it the other way you can group these three together and this is separate. So, then it tells you that the commutator is product h times k h inverse k inverse which is element of capital H as h is normal in G because this is conjugate of some element of capital H. So, that should be in capital H and this is already element of capital H the product must be in capital H. So, this means, so this commutator H k is inside the intersection of these two groups, but which is given to be identity by the hypothesis okay? or you are writing it in like two different ways. Okay, maybe I am actually proving A, A implies C. Okay, so, right now I am proving A implies C. So, let us okay, it is not it is not too too bad. So, I am proving A implies C. Okay. So, the H intersection K is identity. So, that means the commutator is actually uh, identity. So, that means H K is same as K H. So, that means you can see that in this thing if you take this k h dash you can replace with h h dash k k dash. So, which is the grouping. So, g g dash is exactly this element. Okay? So, that means the image of g d dash will be exactly h h dash comma k k dash. Okay? So, that tells you that these two are same. So, that means phi is indeed group homomorphism. So, that proves G is isomorphic to H cross K. Okay. So, the only remaining thing B is same as equivalent to A. So, C implies A is obvious that is something we already verified because if you go back to the theorem you can see that once you know that uh, G is isomorphic to H cross K, then all these properties are mandatory. Okay, H K are normal and H intersection K is identity and product H K is G. Okay, you identify H with H cross the identity and K with identity cross K. Okay, so then this statement is obvious. So now B implies A, so that is also obvious because for the same reason okay if you take uh, some element that is coming from the intersection so let me do it there only so so i want to prove that okay let me do it here so i want to do that b implies a for b implies a you can see that so all we need to prove is only one thing uh, so from this statement any G can be written as product of H K that means, so this is verified and H and K are being normal is already given here. So, only thing is left is this uh, H intersection K is identity. So, if you take some X inside H intersection K, so you can see that it will have two different expression. X can be written as identity times X and as well as X times identity and this is tuple e comma x okay, where e is coming from h and x is coming from k and this is a tuple x comma e where x is coming from h and e is coming from capital k. 
So that means x is written in two different ways okay, which is absurd because we have said there is one tuple unique tuple h comma k such that g equal to h k. So basically these two statements being equivalent is somewhat trivial not uh, that hard but both of them are equivalent to this c is somewhat we need to verify. So that is something we verify. Okay. So this is actually uh, gives characterizations for internal direct product. So internal direct product just to duplicates the external direct product but with the subgroups of capital G. So I will leave some exercises and then uh, stop. So for example, if I take uh, uh, this uh, group Z, so one can prove that this will be never isomorphic to internal direct product of its subgroups. Okay. So similarly one can actually again verify S3 is also cannot be written as internal direct products of for some subgroups H1, H2 inch. Okay. But if you take some groups of, of this form, for example, if you take Z modulo 2Z and then cross Z modulo 3Z, so that will be naturally isomorphic to Z modulo 6Z. So you can write the six mo Z modulo 6Z as internal direct product of these two subgroups. So I, I just leave it to you to find out what will be the corresponding uh, these groups. Okay, So write Z modulo 6Z as internal direct product of some subgroups. Okay. Of course, some non-trivial subgroups that is what I mean. Okay, I will stop here. So I, I urge you to do these exercises. Okay. So we will continue uh, in next class with uh, group homomorphisms and uh, some, some of its uh, uh, applications and properties. Okay. So I will stop here. Thank you.